Aries just raised 11 billion euros, and that's including leverage, more like 15 billion euros, to create uh, Europe's largest direct lending fund. Um, it's really great to get there, this perspective because we talk a lot about how there's the catch-up potential in European equities. So I'm wondering what it was like to raise this big amount of money. Well, first of all, thanks, uh, thanks for having us. Um, yeah, it was, it was quite an experience uh, raising the capital. When we launched, uh, it was May of last year. Um, things were completely locked down. There was a lot of COVID uncertainty. Frankly, we were focused a lot on our existing portfolios. When we talked to investors, the themes we talked about really resonated with them. You know, we offer really interesting risk-adjusted returns that are fixed income and orientation. Our strategy is quite downside protected. And we're finding also some interesting new deals to do, proving we could deploy in a tough market. What type of, type of companies are you looking at and have the types of companies you're looking at changed as a result of the pandemic? Yeah, it's a great question. Again, we operate a very defensive strategy, so maybe it's not a huge surprise that over time we're not so focused on cyclicals. You won't find automotives and energy and high fashion in our portfolio. We prefer businesses that are like telecommunications, healthcare, software, ones with much more predictable uh, revenue lines. And certainly in a COVID environment, that's been even more important. So we, we've seen a bunch of $2 billion uh, plus in deals in the private credit market. Like, is this siphoning um, money away from banks and business from banks? How do you see the market? Yeah, again, it's a, it's a great question. I'd answer that question two ways. The first is in Europe, we're in the middle of a long-term secular change away from the banking sector, which really got hurt hard in the GFC, was further challenged by significant regulations thereafter, and COVID represents the next challenge. That's created a lot of opportunity for firms like ourselves to make loans to middle-sized companies. And we estimate that our market share today is around 50%, and that was zero when we started 14 years ago. And in addition, now that we've raised more capital, we're also more relevant to larger companies. So we can be opportunistic and suit their needs when the timing makes sense. How has the ECB and, and other central banks have done this as well, but the ECB continues to do it and do it in size. The ECB is trying to force money into the system to provide companies in Europe with the ability to borrow uh, not only in size but at, but at super low cost. Can you just walk me through the dynamic of, of what you're doing and how the, how the ECB is impacting that? Sure. Well, the ECB funnels a lot of that capital through the banking sector, but one thing they haven't addressed is the significant regulation that banks face. The Basel regime, for example, has made it much less profitable to make the same kinds of loans that we would make to companies. So when we approach a business, we can provide a complete solution. We can write a loan of anywhere from 50 million to 500 million or even, even a billion uh, in some instances. And banks really can't compete with that very effectively at the moment. So what's interesting though, it is that when it comes to the US, for example, it feels like the push is to take a look at this kind of lending uh, and shadow banks, for et cetera, et cetera. Do you feel like there's going to be the same kind of movement in Europe as well? Well, certainly, we believe that our industry is many, many years behind that of the US. In the US, it's quite a bit more mature. I think from our perspective, we manage capital on behalf of very sophisticated investors. We're already regulated by entities like the FCA. So again, everything we're doing is, is completely out in the open. Just kind of to bring this all together, how big uh, you talk about you talk about the market being behind the US. Can you quantify that for me and then talk about, therefore, the scale of the opportunity that could exist within Europe? Sure. It's a great question. We estimate that the US market size for what we do is around a trillion. Uh, in Europe, it's perhaps 300 billion, although the data isn't isn't perfect. And another way of saying it, we talk to about 1,000 European companies each and every year, and we make loans to maybe 20, 30, or 40 of them. Mm -hmm. So we still think that there's a lot left to go for. And again, if you look at the market share of lenders like Aries United States, it's again, 80 or 90%, whereas in Europe, it's probably closer to 50%. So 
where did you have certain sectors that you feel like are better opportunities? And I'm also wondering how the ESG thing plays into all of this because it's a different kind of acceptance slash motivator, I think, in Europe than in the US. Yeah, ESG is incredibly high on our agenda. Um, it's been a part of our credit process for many, many years. But I think recently what we've seen is that the pandemic highlighted inequalities in our society, which really has served to accelerate change. And everyone thinks that ESG and d and is the right thing to do for business. It's, it's good business. But what's changed in the last year or two is that we've really realized that we're the control lender in every deal. We tend to be the only lender to the company. We have a lot of capital at risk. And in addition, a lot of influence over our companies. So we're trying harder than ever to make sure that they have positive ESG rules within their companies to make us all proud of what they're doing.